Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics, and today I'm showing you exactly how I get rad finishes on my 3D printed parts. A special part of me enjoys it when people go, I cannot believe that was 3D printed. And one of the best ways to get that reaction is through post-processing. Now, this is not to belittle a raw print result, which you can achieve from a correctly dialed in fused filament fabricating 3D printer. I love those finishes too, but you won't ever be able to get a mirror reflective finish from it. Just check out this before and after shot and tell me it does not get you psyched. So this will go through the process I do to get nice usable finishes that you can hold and touch and not be concerned about it rubbing off. It's gonna be excellent for statue pieces or for clamshell cases. You're gonna need 280 and 400 sandpaper. The more the better, there's nothing worse than running out. You're gonna need prime and putty in one repair spray. You're also gonna need paint and prime black spray paint. You're also gonna need gloss clear spray paint. You're also gonna want a wire tray or something like cardboard to seat your components on. And finally, you're gonna want gloves and you're also gonna want a mask. The exact stages I go through to post-process are stage one, the initial sandpapering to help the first layer of primer to stick. 240 grit is a good starting point. Stage two is three layers of primer putty and two hours of drying time between each layer. Each layer sand back aggressively except for the final one. Stage three, for the best final primer putty layer, grab your sandpaper, fold it and fold it. So then it becomes a rigid flat piece like this and then grab your component, say this is the one I was gonna work on, it's already done, but I'm not gonna work on it right now. And then you can grab this sandpaper and very carefully use it to fine all those edges off. Stage four, you're gonna want three layers of paint and prime black spray paint. One hour of drying time between each layer. And each layer also sand aggressively, except for the last one using 400 grit. Now, each layer needs only be very thin. More layers showing through, the deeper and more beautiful the final result's gonna be. The final layer of this black spray, you're not gonna wanna sand. Stage five, you're gonna want two layers of gloss clear spray paint, this one. You know, you're gonna leave about one hour of drying time between each layer. Now this is gonna protect the layers underneath and give a really nice final sheen. You're then gonna sand back that first layer lightly with 400 grit, and then you're not gonna sand the final layer. Stage six. Once that final layer is complete, you're gonna bring your components to an airy and dust-free environment. And you're gonna leave them for a day until that paint looks dry. Worth noting, it's still gonna be quite mushy, that paint, so don't touch the surface just yet. And stage seven, you're gonna take those components outside, leave in a semi-shady area, and let it dry for about four plus days. Now, if it's in the sun all day, this is gonna speed up the process, but don't let rain get on your components. Multiple layers will take days to truly cure and dry, so place it outside where the sun can seal it and completely solidify that paint. Wait as long as you think, and then wait twice as long. Now, good spray paint technique involves wearing gloves and a mask and shaking that can for five minutes. You're gonna shake it until you think it's good, and then you're gonna shake it some more, and spraying in an arc from 45 centimeters away from the particular component. Like shh, shh, shh. It is easy to switch off and spray too close, but that's gonna to put too much paint on your surface. So each layer should only be thin and you should be able to see the previous layers before it when a layer is done. This is gonna enable a nice depth to the surface as you will be able to see more into the layers of the piece. It's also gonna prevent details of the actual component being lost. If you spray too heavy, then you can always sand it back. And if bulbous liquid drops are forming on the surface of the component, or droplets are running down off the edges or sides of that component, these are both indicators that this particular layer you've put on is too thick. You can always sand back material, so just wait and sand it back. Patience is rewarded hugely in this process. Also worth knowing, at every layer, it is important to wait until that surface is dry enough to work with. Now this is normally gonna take an hour or two, even though it says on the cans 15 minutes. Spray paint can be deceptive and look dry when it's actually really, really wet. By shining a flashlight on the part, it's gonna reveal whether it's wet or not. Now, that hour between layers is enough 
to work on the components, but the layers are still going to be mushy and prone to fingerprints marring on that surface. So for the final layers, between colors, do not sand or touch the painted surface. Then the post-processing will be complete. And this is the exact stages that I have gone through to post-process this clamshell case to have this kind of automobile finish and sheen. This clamshell was printed using CPE+, but the process I describe will work on almost all readily available 3D print materials. So long as the material is sturdy and capable of being sanded and allows primer and spray paint to stick to it, you're gonna have great similar results. I use spray paints, but there are many other methods and airbrushing is the first one that comes to my mind and many other paints that you can use, which can give like a marble or a metallic final result that are definitely worth exploring. Post-processing with paint takes time, so like I say, patience is required in each step of this workflow. It's good to be doing other things at the same time, so that way you don't catch yourself watching paint dry. By the way, this clamshell design is a slightly modified design, but it was originally from a GWE case designed by G-Man himself. Link down below in the description for his design of the GWE case and the bit built world. And that's that. I hope you found this valuable. If you like our content, come like and subscribe. And until next time, stay cozy.